Hey guys, uh, hope you're doing well. Give me a minute here first. Okay. All right, I hope you can all uh, hear me okay and uh, see me as well. Thank you all for joining. Good to see you. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Warren. Hi, Gertrude. Hi, Daniel. Good to see you. <laughs> Thanks for all the amazing thumbs up, guys. <laughs> Awesome. All right, I hope you all are doing well. Let's pray. Uh, okay. Father, we love you. We honor you. We, we thank you for this gift of life. Uh, Lord, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you that your grace sustains us, that gives us a, the strength to uh, face another day, Lord. We thank you for your love that uh, continues to sustain us, Jesus gives us the strength, Father, to endure uh, all things. Lord, we thank you for your word, Holy Spirit. Uh, I pray that you will come and open up our eyes to the wonder of your word, or the wonder of who Jesus is. So come and manifest and display the wonder-working power of Jesus in our midst, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Okay. Well, good to see you. Uh, I hope you got some good rest last night. Awesome. Great. Uh, very quickly, uh, we've covered five chapters, right? Can you all hear me at the back? This here in the classroom? All fine? Can you hear me okay? All right. All right. Um, so we've covered five chapters now so far in this topic or in this course of ministering, healing, and deliverance. Um, can you very quickly share some of the things that you have learned? You can put your hands up or you can just type in the chat section. Um, what are some of the things that you have learned that you remember that's ministered to you? That um, I'm not trying to test your memory. I am trying to test uh, or trying to ask what's ministered to you and, you know, in this content that we've covered so far. So, yes, I could. Uh, very essence and emphasis of, you know, Jesus healing all of them. Sorry, the emphasis of you know Jesus healing all of them. Right, the, the tendency emphasis. prior to uh, you emphasizing and we uh, right. coming to uh, uh, read that on a frequent basis is like you know we uh, it was like you know healing was either uh, seasonal or it could be like only with efforts, but just to hear and see that, and it is his, his goodwill to heal all. Yes. So that was something that really you know stayed. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Can we increase that mic's volume or some clarity? I think it's a little muddy, but yes. Yeah, anyone else uh, can also feel free to uh, unmute and uh, speak or share anything that's kind of uh, made sense to you, you know. Okay, God's will is to heal everyone, yeah. Right. Correct, yeah, we can use his name, his cross, his blood for healing and deliverance, okay. Oh, he remembers that punchline. Okay. <laughs> yeah, with intimacy, God will use us. Without intimacy, we will be using him. Yes. Um, anything else? Mm. Mm. Yeah, thank you. So God is not the author of sickness. I'm glad that we are all very clear about that, right? Uh, you know, if anybody says that, okay, this sickness is from God, rebuke, <laughs> you know, uh, 
because that is just the wrong teaching, isn't it? Uh, you know, why some of why the church is not advancing in healing and deliverance? One of the first one of the reasons we saw is wrong teaching, isn't it? It's it's very sad because if I, as as a leader, and in this class alone we have fifteen people, and uh, you know together uh, almost thirty five. If I'm teaching that okay, sickness comes from God, one person is having an impact on thirty five to forty people. And that 40 people will go out and share the same thing, you know, with another 40. And it will only keep multiplying, isn't it? Um, so, I mean, the power of teaching, the power of words, power of declaring the right things is so important. And it is very, very important that we are clear that sickness is not from Jesus. Right? He is not the author. And it is his will to heal us, right? Like you said, he healed everyone who came to him there is not a single person that jesus sent said go away he healed with compassion right uh, okay so we have um okay, Deepu says not the process or method is healing but it is the person yeah thank you and sanjay says the ministry of healing and deliverance isn't for a select few amen it's for all of us who believe in christ we are all called to heal the sick and minister deliverance to those in need yes thank you for sharing that sanjay god's perfect will god's perfect will is to heal us thank you lucy yes okay what else we've learned quite a bit uh, in the last five chapters because uh, uh there won't be what we in this course for chapter 9 10 11 and 12 will be covered in other courses and other subjects okay uh, emotional uh, healing uh, inner wholeness and the gifts of the holy spirit benefits of the holy spirit uh, of the speaking in tongues so other chapters will be covered then but we will only be covering three more chapters in this course so we don't uh, you know is uh, but it's more about practical guidelines on the last two chapters okay so this chapter and the next chapter is um, just getting a little practical about it and then I'll, I'll i'll share the final assignment it'll be a book review um book report um that's the final assessment um not for e-learning students <laughs> okay anything uh, come on just talk to me it's some of the things what you've learned don't don't be shy um Again, I said, you know, this. I'm not trying to test your memory. I'm really trying to gauge if something from this course has ministered to your spirit, to your heart. And so that's the that's the thing you will carry for the rest of your life when you're ministering. It's not, you know, memor memorizing things. Although memory memorizing is good, uh, but yeah, Joseph. Faith and. Heal. Yeah, okay. So having faith. Right. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. It is, faith is a very important uh, element or component in... in Christian life in general, um, but okay. All right, what else, guys? This side. What's up? Mm. Mm. Right. So yeah, Jesus healed everyone who came to him in faith. Okay. Yeah, he was willing to heal anyone who's coming. Uh, to him in faith. Okay, anyone from online, guys? Who else? Anusha, Sam. Okay, I keep forgetting the camera is up there. So, <laughs> yeah, Psalm 115, verse 3 is the best. <laughs> he, he does whatever he pleases, of course. Okay. All right, cool, uh, fine. So, uh, you know, I really hope you are learning something and it's something that's staying with you uh, in your spirit and it blesses you. And I also hope that this course, uh, you know, creates in us the urgency of uh, and the importance of ministering healing and deliverance. 
right? Um, you know, one of the points which I really love is it reveals who God is, right? It reveals the nature of God, right? We don't always have to, uh, you know, open up our Bible, and we might not always have the opportunity to open the Bible and preach the gospel. But we can simply go and ask, can I pray for you? Isn't it? And so ask, just getting a chance or an opportunity to pray for a stranger or for an unbeliever creates an opportunity for you to reveal the nature of God and the love of God. Are you with me? Yes. And so I, I really hope you understand the importance and the urgency uh, of this ministry. Okay, so uh, chapter 7. We are skipping chapter 6. Um, we're looking at chapter 7. It states practical guidelines on ministering healing. Practical guidelines on ministering healing. Okay, so um, we are going to be looking at a certain practical guidelines on how we can go about ministering and healing. Okay, now please notice that the word guidelines is being used and it's not a rule. Okay, a rule is different from a guideline, right? So it's not say this is how you have to do it, this is how you should do it, this is how you should minister healing and deliverance. A guideline is what it's just okay, you know, it's pointing, it's saying, okay, you can go a certain direction uh, or not. So it's just guiding points for us. Now, this entire chapter, okay, every single point can be the same, and I can just change the, uh, the title of this chapter from ministering healing to receiving healing. So you can preach two different sermons. Just change the title, but the points will remain the same. I can write a whole different book with all the same points, but just change the title, saying how to receive healing. Okay, So the same points will be applicable for ministering healing and receiving healing. Understood? Uh, receiving healing, to receive anything, uh, I think we need a special grace for that as well, because we are not always good at receiving things. Some of us are, um, but some of us are too proud to receive help. Have you, you know, oh, it's, okay, it's okay, I can do it, don't help me. Uh, have you ever said that, you know, like, no, I, I, you know, so why, should I, why should I get help from you? I can do it with myself. You know, there's a level of, there's a certain element of uh, pride and arrogance in it. Why should she help me? Oh, why should he help me? Why should I ask for help? I will do it by myself. You know, um, if we learn to receive honor, we will learn to give honor, or we will know how to give honor. If you do not know how to receive honor, you will not know how to give honor. Honor. Understood? That's very important. Uh, you know, you've just led worship, and someone comes and tells you, is like, uh, you know, Akhil, you led worship really well. Uh, I had a blessed time. They're like, ah, oh, no, 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 no. You know, oh, it's, it's not me, brother. It's Jesus. It's only Jesus. Jesus. It was not that good. But <laughs> uh, you know, you what we do is someone appreciates you or acknowledges you or honors you, you you receive it. You say thank you and praise God. Right? Say thank you, praise God. So it's very important in the kingdom of God we learn how to receive. Because if we don't receive honor, eventually you will we will not have a crown to throw before the king. I'll say that one more time. If we do not know how to receive honor, metaphorically, we will not have a crown to throw before the king. Okay, um, because we are giving him all the glory and honor. Okay, so it's very important that we learn to receive honor, and um, so this, this that's what this chapter is all about. 
different ways to minister healing and same points as applicable to receive healing okay so let's look at the first one through personal faith in god the first step to minister healing is through personal faith in god let's look at proverbs chapter 4 Proverbs chapter 4 was 20 and 22. Proverbs chapter 4 was 20 to 22. Right. It says, My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to a man's heart whole body so uh okay you have faith in god and you and now you mix that with the word of god right it starts off by saying in verse 20 uh listen closely to my words do not let them out of your sight keep them within your heart keep what within your heart what is the scripture saying keep keep it within your heart what is it saying keep what words right keep Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to a man's whole body. Right, and so when faith is mixed with the word of God, uh, it's a very good starting place for us to minister healing and deliverance. Right, your faith and your word. Now, in the previous chapters, we've learned so many different bases to minister healing and deliverance. What are the different bases? The cross of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. The name of Jesus, God's word, Holy Spirit, sorry, the promise of salvation, yeah. Okay, so it's it's a good place to start, isn't it? So faith and it mixed with the word of God, okay. Um, another important element aspect here is uh, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Does anybody, can anyone tell what, what it says? Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If you believe in your heart and and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, good. <laughs> right. So believing and speaking. So faith in God can be expressed in just two different ways. Okay, believing and speaking. And believing and acting on your faith. Okay, believing and speaking, and believing and acting on your faith. Okay, um, all right. Let's let, let let me try this. A very simple. Um, I, I don't know what to call this, but uh, okay. So I'm going to ask you, in your mind, to count from one between one to ten. Okay, don't start. All right, and start counting in only in your mind when I say start. All right, start. What is your name? Okay, <laughs> so you are counting. Which number did you stop at? Three. Okay, <laughs> this is a very simple exercise, guys. Okay, I'm trying to com communicate a very simple point. So, Blessy was count thinking something else, but he declared something else. Yes or no? He's thinking something else, but he declared something else. In his mind, he is counting one between one, two, three, four. Okay, but he when I asked him a question, he said his he told me his name. Uh, very similarly, we you know, in we go through life, and life is not always easy. Right? Uh, there will be times where you're thinking like giving up. Man, I can't do this. I can't do this. You know, I feel like giving up. Uh, what do I do? But Words have power. Is it you declare against those negative thoughts? It's like, oh, God is for me. He's fighting for me. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Right? He is my deliverer. He is my protector. He is my provider. What are you doing? You are declaring faith over your situation. So you're believing it. Although you know there is there's logic that and reasoning that is going against it, you believe and you declare the word of God. Your faith is now mixed with his 
word are you with me yes and uh, you know philippians chapter 2 verse 12 i think it says work out your salvation in fear and trembling it's in the bible philippians chapter 2 verse 12 it says work out your salvation with fear and trembling work out is what exercise in, in, in like we but that's the word or language we use if someone is going to the gym or whatnot. Okay, I'm going to work out. What do, what do they mean? I'm going to do some exercise, isn't it? And so what is exercise? What are you doing? You're, you're acting on what you want to do. Okay, nobody can just sit in the chair. We can all do that, by the way. We can all sit in this chair and simply say, I love to work out. I love to ham, uh, you know, have these six pack, but we all have those one family pack, you know. <laughs> we all like the idea of working out. Yes or no? We all like the idea of having amazing fit body. I hope so. <laughs> right? But not all of us work on it. Are you following what I'm saying? We all like the idea of having a fit body, but not all of us act on it, I should say. Similarly, in context of uh, the kingdom and his word, we all like the idea of following Jesus, but not always everyone acts on it. We all like the idea that Jesus is our healer. Yes or no? If I ask you, we, you know, every, every, every Christian would say, it's like, yes, Jesus heals. Most of them, <laughs> right? They would, they would, we all like the idea. Okay, we all like the idea of having an intimate relationship with God, but we will not pay the price to secret, you know, spend time in secret place. We all want a ready made anointing, 30 seconds, microwave results, put inside, put, you know, take outside. Okay, it's not going to happen. It's not enough that you have that you like the idea. We need to act on it. And God expects us to act on it, right? It all begins with believing, speaking, and acting on it, right? Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, classic scripture. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes from hearing. Yes, faith comes from hearing, and hearing comes from the word of God. Right? And that which builds our faith. Are you all with me? All good? Following? Right. Another element of this, we're still in the first point. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> uh, you know, this the first point that says through personal faith in God, you can pray for yourself or you can also intercede for another person. Okay, with faith in God, you can pray for yourself. You can also pray for the other person. That's what ministering, uh, healing, and deliverance, the first point is. Okay. Second one, let's move on. Uh, through the prayer of agreement. Wait, we just uh, back up just a little bit. Um, you know, if in the, to the previous point, it says exercising faith for others. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, we, we, I just give you an example of the Roman centurion. Right? Do, we, do we all know the story of the Roman centurion? Yes. Okay. So the again, I know you know there will be a lot of stories that we speak about in this class, which we which will be repeated. Uh, I'm sorry, and I'm also not sorry about it. Okay. Uh, the Roman centurion, he is not even a Jew. He's a Roman, right? He's a Gentile, in other words. A Gentile recognizes the power in Jesus just by observing, just by looking at him, right? He knew that he was. He understands that he is the man in power. He knows if he says something, you know, people will do it. And he, he looks at Jesus and says, I recognize authority when I see one. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing it. All you have to do is just say the word, Lord. Just say the word. Okay. Uh, Let's look at the other section there. It says, there can be mutual faith in God where two or more believers together. In James chapter 5, uh, we see that uh, the, the four, uh, sorry, the group of elders uh, coming together, 
and praying in, in faith. And we can also minister healing in the corporate setting. As mentioned in Acts chapter 14, verse 19 to 20. Um, so please go through all those scriptures. Okay, so the first one is through personal faith in God. And the second one is through the prayer of agreement. Through the prayer of agreement. Let's read Matthew 18, verse 18 to 20. Uh, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Awesome. So uh, give me some of the alternate or similar words for agreement. This is through the prayer of agreement. What does that mean? What, what other word can you use for agreement? Sorry? Both of us are on the same page. OK, we are getting closer. So what does that look like? Just say it, guys. It's okay. There's no right or wrong answer. I'm not going to fail you. It's like, oh, what are we doing? <laughs> what, 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 word, what, what other word comes to your mind when you hear the word agreement? Mutual consent. Mutual consent. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Confirm. Confirmed. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Anything. Proof, okay. Mutual consent, proof, okay. Agreement, 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 agreement. I'm thinking of covenant. I'm coming. We are coming together in agreement. What else? We both understand the same thing, and we both believe the same thing. Okay. Uh, very often in the book of Acts, it says the apostles came together in one accord, okay. not the Honda car accord. <laughs> they, came, they came together in one accord, in one heart. Yeah, Shekhar is onto it. What does that mean? Unity. Okay. Um, so another word that we can look at is unity for agreement. Okay. So what does it say? Through prayer of agreement or unity. Okay. Something about a united heart in, in a corporate setting, it moves the heart of God. Something about a group of people coming together in His name, in one accord, in, un, in, in, in one heart, really moves heaven and earth. Um, you can read about it in the Old Testament. I can share with you scriptures after scriptures. It says, uh, again, in the Book of Chronicles and all when Solomon built his temple, it says, when the priests and everybody sang together in one accord, the cloud came down. The glory of God came down. When all the you know priests blew their trumpets, 120 trumpets in one accord, something happened. Are you with me? So there is... And that's the one thing the enemy is against. So he's made us Christians so busy at fighting each other, uh, saying, OK, oh, you Baptist, you Lutherans, you Methodists, you Pentecostals, you Charismatics, you Radicals. Uh, oh, we don't speak in tongues. You don't speak in tongues. You know, you know we are so busy fighting each other. And that's exactly what the enemy wants. But if only we came together in unity, that we believe that one common denominator, Jesus, that he died on the cross, he rose again. If you could just respect that and come together, and heaven and earth would be moved. right? And so there is so much power. And, and otherwise, Jesus wouldn't have said this. 
coming together in agreement, right? So we do this in agreement while releasing our faith and exercising our God-given authority. God-given authority is another question. So what is the God-given authority? Authority, that's a, a mission. But what's the authority he's given us? What is the God-given authority, guys? Speak to me, speak to me. <laughs> yeah, Jesus' name. What took us so long? <laughs> it was not a tricky question, guys. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And as the Father has sent me, I send you. If you ask anything in my name. <laughs> right, so that is um, you know, the power of agreement, power of coming together in one heart. Uh, and just you and the Holy Spirit who bears witness in you and just saying, Lord, Lord I believe and I put my faith in you. I come in agreement with your word. You are our healer. You are our Jehovah Rapha. That's your covenant name. I believe that. And so now in your name, I pray for over the situation. In your name, I pray for this sickness. In your name, I pray for this person. In your name, I declare healing. Yes, that is how we act in faith, isn't it? It's, see how it's linked to the previous point as well. Um, the fact is, for example, let's say the fact is I'm addicted to uh, alcohol. But the truth is Jesus can set me free. Yes? So let's say the fact is Blessy is addicted to uh, you know smoking. Example, I know you're a good boy, spirit-filled boy. You're in Bible college, okay, Blessy. <laughs> but let's say he's addicted to smoking. That's the that may be the fact. Okay, but me declaring and working on uh, or acting on my faith is what me declaring that you are no longer bound to that addiction. You are set free in Jesus' name. What am I doing? I'm believing, I'm speaking, right? I'm also acting on the faith, on, on his behalf. Are you with me? Right? And so that is also coming in agreement with God's word. Okay, uh, how, how are you guys doing online? All, all fine? Okay. You have a question. Oh, someone has a question. Okay. Ha. <laughs> So it's, it's really talking about two different kingdoms. Uh, so Diksha is really asking a question about Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Uh, what is that? Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Um, so that clearly Jesus is talking about two different kingdoms, the kingdom of earth and the kingdom of God, right? Um, so and heaven is used as a place for the, you know where he dwells. Now, what makes the kingdom of God? Huh? <laughs> well, scripture says something, right? What, what makes the kingdom of God? This is one very old song. Righteousness, peace, Joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so when we say, when we lose the peace of heaven, the joy of heaven, the righteousness of heaven, uh, the fullness of heaven over any situation that does not seem to carry any of that, well, that's what we are losing. You know, we are releasing here on earth as it is in heaven. That's basically what it is. Okay. Okay. So, uh, how do we minister and receive uh, healing? Uh, one is through personal faith in God. 
through the prayer of agreement. Okay, and next we go to the third point, uh, through the prayer of faith. Through the prayer of faith. Okay, James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Uh, is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Now, in that first verse itself, uh, there's another way to minister healing. Okay, so if anyone asks you a question or uh, like a theological question, say, okay, how are you going to minister healing to someone in the church? But James chapter 5 verse 14 says, uh, you know, one of the ways that we can minister healing to someone is, is calling the leaders of the church. Okay, uh, now just because James chapter 5 verse 14 says, call the elders of the church to pray, does it mean only the elders can minister healing and deliverance? What does that mean? <laughs> no, Pastor. Thank you. Someone said a resounding no. <laughs> it all of us can minister in healing and deliverance, isn't it? And uh, and this again, remember the guidelines. These are just guidelines. It's not rules. Okay, so how you have to do it? No, it's one of the ways that we can minister healing and deliverance is calling the elders of the church or the leaders of the church, pastors of the church, etc. Okay, let's move on. But that was not the main point. The verse fifteen is the main point. Uh, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Okay, see the progression. The prayer of faith will save the sick. It's interesting that it doesn't use the word heal the sick. Okay. Prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Okay. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. God given authority. Okay, remember, simple, John 14, 14. Easy to remember, right? If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Okay, so all of us can pray a prayer of faith for someone or for yourself to be healed. Simple, what we've been talking about. All believers can pray the prayer of faith. All of you. Okay, it's fundamental. Um, through a word of command is another thing. Through the word, through a word of command, Matthew chapter eight verse sixteen. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. Luke chapter four verse thirty eight to thirty nine. It says, Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house, but Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever and they made request of him concerning her so he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her and immediately she arose and served them one more scripture and we'll look into that uh, section matthew 17 20 so jesus said to them because of your unbelief for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible um, for you. Okay. Um, so the, in, in the first scripture that we read, Matthew 8, 16, it says, when the e evening had come, they brought to him demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word. Okay, he was not having a dialogue or a conversation. They're like, okay, where you came from? What is your name? You know, all that. Nothing. No. It's just cast out with a word. You know, Psalm 33, verse 6. Psalm 33, verse 6 says, let's read it. Can someone read it? By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Right? It's, it's not even words. It's not plural. <laughs> it's, it's singular. Right? By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And he is the word. Jesus is the word, right? In Revelation chapter 19, we see that it talks about that his robe was dipped in blood and his name was the word of God. It's talking about Jesus, right? So um, through a word of command and this authority has been given to us. In Jesus' name, I have mentioned this before, that 
the name of Jesus is not just another name for us to end a prayer. Okay? The name of Jesus is not another name for us to just simply end the prayer. Right? Okay, Lord bless this food in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> If if only we again continue to understand the power of His word of of the name of Jesus. So through a word of command, uh, we declare again. Uh, we speak the, uh, the words of faith uh, over over every situation, over every sickness. Okay. Um, even in uh, Simon's context, in Luke chapter four, verse thirty-eight and thirty-nine, Simon's mother-in-law is not well, and he just rebuked the fever. It, he he rebuked the fever because um, uh, you know sometimes as Christians I just want to pause pause here we read the Bible uh, hopefully and we read the uh, and and we genuinely um, lose the wonder of Jesus I really hope not because when you read scriptures like this when you read, how many how many times you would have read this scripture or you know the story that okay you know simon's mother-in-law was sick and jesus rebuked the fever we kind of know the story but when you pause and said okay, and just imagine you know just imagine everything what jesus did okay how would he have sounded you know how would he have looked this we are talking about the son of god god incarnate god in person you know, it would have been a treat to listen to Jesus preach, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, God, the God man, his preaching, it would have been something else to just listen to him preach, to listen to him talk, to listen to him teach about the kingdom of God, and then to watch him minister healing and deliverance. You wouldn't have to do any other course after looking at Jesus. <laughs> Jesus's life, right? And so I pray that we don't lose the wonder as we you know of Jesus as we go through the Gospels when we read. Let each and every story, each and every parable, each and every verse, uh, you know, cause us to rejoice in His Word. Are you all with me? Right. So those are the. the I think we looked at four simple points. One. Let's go through them. First one is through personal faith in God. Um, that is believing and speaking your faith and believing and acting on your faith right believing and acting on your faith um, through the prayer of agreement or unity the god given authority that is the name of jesus through a prayer of faith again and through a word of command so these are the four points we've looked so far on how to minister healing and how to receive healing as well Okay, so we'll pause here, uh, we'll take a break, and we'll come back and continue for the next section. Okay, take a break, guys. I'll see you all. So. <laughs>